Hey everyone, it's Chappies Crypto here again with another video about backtesting this time. So I wanted to share with people the backtesting process I've sort of developed over the last month or two. I've done a lot of work and watched a lot of traders um, explain the importance of backtesting. So I thought I'd get serious about it and start doing that. I've been trading cryptocurrency now for about 11 months, still um, in a neutral position or actually down still. Um, so I'm going to be pretty honest about my position. However, my intention of these videos is to share the process that I've been going through, the tools that I've been learning, and hopefully people, it'll just fast track people's uh, speed at which they learn how to use different tools, etc. in the trading space. So this video is really specifically about the process that I've been developing on how to be effective with your backtesting to save as much time as possible. Backtesting takes hours and hours so we're talking about grit uh, this is one of those tasks if you spend the time on it uh, it does take an enormous amount of time however <clears throat> it's an extremely valuable process so without further ado, I want to get straight into it. So you can do this process on any asset so I've been practicing it on um, Forex recently I'm just started looking at the Forex spaces so I'm going to go and show you a particular uh, pair that I've been doing it on. I actually have back tested that and through my backtesting process, I was able to effectively double my account in 69 trades through the backtesting process. Obviously doing things in backtesting, you don't have any emotional touch to the same level. However, what, what I'm trying to do here is replicate the real market as best we can. So I'm using TradingView. There's a link if you don't have a TradingView account. I've worked out how to do referral codes in TradingView now. So there's a link to TradingView if you don't already have an account down in the comments or the description below, I should say. And you can go and get yourself a TradingView account. But the first step that I, I just wanted to explain to people is the indicators that I've got on my chart at the moment. I've got another video where I go into the actual indicators that I do use, but it, just so people understand what they're seeing in my chart. Uh, you'll notice here that I've got the sessions indicator, which is just these bars that are up and down, which just represents the Asian market, the London market and the US market. And I've also got the traders reality indicator turned on. And I've customized that indicator to suit my particular training style. And I've also got the TDI indicator. So I use those indicators to help me with my particular strategy. So I've got a strategy in mind. Um, as I said, the strategy is not overly important at the moment. It's the process on how do you apply your strategy? How do you measure its success or not? And work out your your return rate or your win rate, so to speak. So once you've got your indicators sorted, the first the next step is to work out when you want to back test from. So I've actually got Bitcoin. I've, I haven't actually tested or back tested Bitcoin uh, on this strategy, so this is a very fresh go at this. So I have no idea what we're going to get out of this. I'm just going to show you how to do this on a really basic level. So first step I want to do though is I want to go back into a particular um, point in time. So to go back in time, uh, I go down to this little icon on the bottom of the screen, bottom left hand corner, which is a really quick way of, of getting to a particular date. You can scroll, um, but if you're on the 15 minute time frame and say for instance you want to back test the last six months, you're going to get RSI from doing that. So rather than scroll, 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 I'm going to go down to the go to date function and I'm going to go and choose a particular date to go back to. I'm going to go right back to the 1st of June. Um, I'll actually go to the 1st of July. If you're if you're not sure on how far you can go back in time, I've done a separate video explaining uh, why data appears or doesn't appear in particular points in, of the charts. But I've just gone back on my chart to the th effectively 1st of July. What I'm going to do is I'm going to going to quickly scroll across without paying too much of attention to what I'm seeing on the right side of the screen here. Because what I like to do with my back testing is, is as best I can not know what's coming. Otherwise, it's not really an authentic back test. Because if you do have a bit of a feeling for what's going to happen with price, you do have your former bias. Um, so all I've got on the screen at the moment is Bitcoin. We're going back to this particular date. So I've gone to the date I want to start back testing from. And in this instance, I want to start back testing from the end of the Asia session of, on a Monday. So the next thing that I like to do is think about what time of the day can you trade. So for me, I can probably trade most week nights between about seven o'clock and about midnight roughly give or take and so there's no point in me back testing the market action in the middle of the day because I, I work through the day and I can't um, look at the charts during the day so there's no point for me in back testing that that price action because it's not really going to have any impact on my trading and so I'm only going to be focusing on um, placing trades in my back testing process um, at, at a particular point in time which for me will be from seven o'clock of an evening um, so once I have that understanding, what I want to do now is I'm going to press the replay function. So if I press the replay function, I'm going to then click on, so it gives you this blue bar. Now whenever I press the blue bar is where the back testing will start from. In other words, it'll, it'll hide all the data that goes forward from that point in time. So if I click on it over here on the right hand side of the screen, 
all of the data, including the current price, is now gone, and the current price is displaying me as the price it was back on the 28th of June at roughly 11.45. So the other thing I wanted to, so now you've done that, so you're ready to go with your back testing. One thing to note with these tools is, and this tool here, which shows up when you start back testing, and this is kind of the master controller for the time, for the timing or the speed at which the back testing moves, or the replay function, I should say. Now, one thing to note, if you press that X button, it will take you out of replay mode and take you straight back to the live charts. So what I tend to do, if sometimes I might back test over two or three days. If I've got up to a particular point in my back testing, I'll actually just mark a horizontal, I'll actually, sorry, I'll mark a vertical line so I know where I was up to with my back testing, then I'll come back and go back to a particular date and it just saves you a bit of time in finding that. So to do that, so for, and that's just under the tools. And here I've done this so many times, I just remember the shortcuts, but the vertical line on a Mac is option V, or it's probably command V or something like that on a PC. So if you just click the vertical line tool, and for me, if I'd finished my back testing today, I'd just, I'd put a line there, and then I'd just know when I come back tomorrow, I could go back to that point in time, roughly remember I was towards the end of June, and I'll just go back there and I'll start my replay tool from there again. Uh, it's just a little heads up, it might help you with some some little dramas. And if you accidentally press the X, it'll take you straight out of the mode and that can get quite frustrating. Um, however, let's get stuck into it. So the next thing that I do before I actually get stuck into the actual um, moving forward in time is I have a look to the left and I mark out um, my setup or what I'm looking for. So I trade, I've been trading using the hybrid system from Tino and Traders Reality. I'm still very much a novice at applying his strategies. I've been only on the process for probably a month or so. Um, so what I want to do though is I want to see the Asian session on a Monday um, finish off or close the Asian session, then I start to pay, take particular notice. So to go forward, there's a couple of ways to do it. If I just press a play button, it will start playing in real, it'll, it'll play back on at the moment, it'll update one candle every half a second. You can change the speed at which it does that. So if you want it to be quite quick, or quite slow, just move that around. Uh, in this instance, because I'm quite close to the end of the Asian session, I just want to go forward manually one candle at a time. So to do that, one candle at a time, you, all you need to do is press that button there. So that button there allows you just to go one candle at a time. So we're just going to go one candle at a time, and we're going to move forward until we see the Asian session close. Now the th nice thing about the replay mode is all your normal functions work as per normal so you can zoom right in you can change time frame if you want to um, it, it's quite cool because they're effectively acting as if it's live right now um, so we're going to keep on going I'm going to move forward in time there we go we've got the close the asian session i know that because this indicator will actually change from that greeny color to a gray color and i know the asian session is closed so in the hybrid system i'm actually going to mark um, i'm going to mark the psychological highs and lows so i'm just going to put a line there and a line here the low of the asian session which is just something that if you're not familiar with that means i'd recommend you go check out the traders reality youtube channel and have a look and he'll explain about psychological levels um, but that's a particular point of interest for me so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to start to pay attention because if i'm if i was really trading right now and this was live today um, i'd probably be sitting on my computer at about seven o'clock starting to pay attention to what was happening with price action at that point um, so we're going to start to have a look at what happens here so I press play and i'm looking for a particular indication of i might be wanting to place a trade and based on the hybrid system i'm looking back here and what i'm expecting to happen possibly and please don't um, <laughs> get too upset if I get these trades wrong because uh, it's not really about the trading style right now it's more about just the back testing process so for me that's a peak formation low so I'd mark that off uh, this is possibly a level one test I've possibly got a level two forming here so if I was going to project out where I think price might go and I, I have no clue where it's going to go I'm probably going to get it wrong um, however, I'm just going to mark out using this tool here, the path tool. So if I think prices come down here, here, and then come up here, I wouldn't be surprised if we come down here and do this. That's kind of where I expect it to be. So what I'll be looking for particularly is I'll be looking for an indication to possibly place a long trade on this particular moment in time. So as I scroll in, Let's have a look to see if we can see some candles that will give us an indication that it's a good idea to go for, to go long. So in my back testing now, because I'm actually in the period of time where I'd typically be trading, 
the candles aren't going because these are 15 minute candles they're not going to go bang 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 they're going to you know it's 15 minutes between each candle so i've got some time so i press one candle and i'm going to keep on going one by one until i see a particular candlestick set up that may be an indication that i might want to place a trade so for me nothing just yet i've got interestingly there's a hit to the high hit to the high just had a green vector candle big green vector candle so it looks like we might have missed that particular setup um <clears throat> now obviously i wouldn't in this particular instance i probably would have missed that trade however i want to show you how to actually do it if you were to pick up on that so if you'd actually decided you know what we've got a green vector candle there and so we've got a green vector candle we've also got a bounce and a bounce off the base of the tdi so you know our initial thesis is we're probably going to go along so let's just draw in if we were to take a trade at that point so if we're going to take a trade i'm going to go and use this tool here so if i'm going to place a long tool i'm going to press long position or a short trade i'm going to press short position so long position and i'm going to place it at the close of the previous or the, the open of this candle so in theory i've gone one candle too far so i should have stopped it at the end of that candle but i want to place the trade there now to get the ratios right so we can actually work out a risk to reward scenario I'm going to put the base of this at where my stop loss would typically be so say for instance i want my stop to be just under this range now i i want to actually trade with a one to three risk to reward ratio so when you're looking at this particular tool you'll see on the on this particular long position tool this thing it says risk to reward ratios two to 1.9 two to 2.19 so all i need to do is i'll scroll that up this is the target where i want to go to to till i get it to around three so for me, that's my setup. So I would be looking to place a trade in or around the, that level there. And I'm hoping it's gonna come up to this level, but if it comes down to here, that's where I'm gonna get stopped out. So if I'm live trading, I would actually transpose that information into Bybit or my exchange that I trade with, um, either a market or a limit order, depending on how you like to trade. And hopefully you've taken your trade at that point. Now, I'm gonna show you how I record my trades for back testing purposes, because one of the things that I've discovered is really can be quite time consuming is how do I keep track of my back tested trades? And I'm gonna show you a really, really simple strategy in a minute, which is based on some of the other videos I've already shared. Um, so we've placed the position. Um, one of the things I like to do as well is I like to keep account how many trades I've done. So I'm gonna use the, the text tool, which is just over here on the left-hand side. So if that's not showing up there just all you need to do is click on that menu and choose the text tool and I click at the top here and I'm just going to put one so I know that's my first trade so a pretty simple process so far and we're going to let this play out and see what happens so let it play we may get this totally wrong let's just see what happens and we got stopped out there you go so trade got stopped out obviously they're just trapping some long trades here so we'll come back down here and we've lost our first trade so how do i keep track and record that well in an earlier video i posted a little while ago about how to manage risk i've created this well i stole this idea from um, another youtuber which i make reference to in my original video um, but i've created this risk management tool a really simple risk management tool which is based on the concept of marble so imagine we've got a, a jar full of marbles and imagine that my trading account has got a thousand dollars in it so i'm willing to risk a thousand dollars um, so what I've done is I said, okay, well, how many trades do I think I'd like to possibly gamble with until my account is totally gone? So in this instance, I've, I've assumed, you know what, I think if, if I were to do 40 trades in a row and I lost all 40 trades, it'd be pretty bad going and it's pretty unlikely. So I want to estimate that there's 40 trades available to me. So 40 trades, each of these marbles, interestingly, there's 40 marbles in my jar. Uh, if you think you don't need 30 tra 40 trades you want to change it to 30 just change it to 30 and then what i'll do is i go and delete 10 marbles uh, the link to this template will actually be in the description of the video if you want to actually use the marble template i've created it's actually just through google's um, jamboard software which is freely available and it's really cool and it's just an online whiteboard but you can create this sort of concept anything or you could actually physically make the actual jars if you wanted to so i've got 40 trades and for me if i divided a thousand by 40 it means that each of these marbles is effectively worth 25 dollars or that's how much i'm willing to risk so 25 dollars per trade that's what I'm risking per trade on this particular backtesting scenario. My goal is to try and see how long it will take me to, to move all the marbles from the middle jar to the right jar. So on this first trade here though, we've lost. 
So if, if we're trading to a one to three risk, risk to reward ratio, and I'm gonna type that in here as well. Risk to reward is one to three. And I'll go into the detail of, of how that all works in another video. However, if I'm going to a risk to reward ratio one to three, and on this particular instance, if we come up to here, that means we'd actually won, we'd, we'd actually won three times what we're risking. And when I mean risk to reward, I mean that the amount that's on risk here, when you place your trade in Bybit, you need to ensure, or whatever exchange you're using, you need to ensure that your stop loss is set so that you're risking no more than $25. Ideally, you spot on $25, and that's just a bit of trial and error. However, um, and, and, it's, and it's just navigating on or manipulating the leverage as well as your position size to get it so that your position equals the size of your stop loss you like to trade with. But for me, that's just, I've taken a little bit of time, I worked out to do that fairly quickly. Um, so for me, I know that if this trade stopped out, I'm losing $25. So on that trade there, we stopped out. So I'm gonna, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move one of my marbles out of here into my losing trades. So that's done. First trade recorded. Let's keep on pressing play and see what happens next. So right now though, I'm getting towards, it's based on this scenario, it's, you know, it's, it's eight o'clock, actually it should be a bit later, but just in this instance, just to pretend for a second, that it's getting late at night and getting a bit tired. We're gonna find the um, US market just open here. Actually, I apologize. That was the London there. This is the crossover between London and US and this is the US market here. Uh, this based on this session, on this particular indicator. So right now for me, I'm probably asleep by this time. So what I've, once again, I try to make my back testing as realistic as possible. So rather than sit here and look at what happens with price action, I'm gonna speed it up because the next time I'm gonna really be trading for real life, in real life will be when the Asian market closes again. So I'm just gonna play it right through and as we get close to Asia, oops, there you go. I'm gonna, I've paused it. So you're gonna watch that timing. I find that the closest one to the end is too quick. So I like to do mine one update every half a second, which gives you enough time when you press pause for it to actually stop. But if you look at the price action here now, what are we seeing happening? We're seeing a massive accumulation along this price level here so for me based on hybrid system as well and we're on Tuesday at the moment we may get another tick up to the side but I'm gonna start thinking that we're not far off possibly coming down again so I'm gonna slowly just go forward and see if I can see a candle that will give me an indication that's what we're about to hear so that's a nice breakout to the high possible stop hunt and what I would probably be doing right now is I'm looking for a candle to come back down below and possibly look to take a short trade let's see now let's say on this instance here I'm just going to take a short position here slightly and the reason I'm doing that is I've got a couple of confirmations I've got a confirmation the TDI I've got a confirmation we've got a red vector or a violet vector candle and we've got two so for me that's a stop hunt so that's come up and taken the stops out of here and it's possibly gonna reverse down why because there's a whole bunch of the market makers have been building short positions for the last couple of days here. So there's a f probably a better better than 50% chance we're gonna head down. I have no clue if we're gonna head down. So if it goes the other way, I've, I've read it wrong. And that's okay, this is part of the learning journey. So we're gonna press a short trade here. Just there. I'm gonna put my stop loss just above that price point. And we're gonna drag it down once again, paying attention to the risk to reward number in the middle of the screen until I get it to my desired risk to reward. So one to three, so three is where I'm headed. So I'm gonna make a decision at this point. Do I think that's a realistic trade? So you've got to do your own analysis based on your own strategy. You look at that setup, you say, yeah, I think that's reasonable or not. And that's a totally personal decision. Um, I'm gonna copy this and paste it again. So I just clicked on that number one, copied it and pasted it. And now I've got, if I double click on there, press two, and that's my second trade. So that's a quick way, rather than going to the text tool and pressing the text tool again, I can just copy and paste my last number. So I know this is the second trade I would take. So let's see, I may have gone early here because oftentimes it's better to wait for the second leg. However, let's see how this plays out. It's always a risk. And it's playing. There we go, and we just got stopped out again. So we're gonna scroll this back. We got closed that stopped out at that point. I'm gonna go back into my risk reward calculator or tool, my marbles, and I'm gonna drag one marble back over to the left. So rather than having to keep this specific spreadsheet of all my individual trades, I find that process of just using these marbles is a really quick, easy way to measure and keep track of it. And I'm gonna go on with my back testing. Once again, for me, I'm getting towards not far off US opening, so I'm probably getting very tired in real life. 
because the price action is getting up to where I think the peak might be, I'd probably, in a normal life, I'd probably stay awake for a bit longer here because I'm pretty interested to see what happens with price here. Right now, I'm thinking that we're getting pretty close to possibly a level three or a peak formation high. And is it going to do what I hope it does? Not yet. At this point in real life, I'm probably really tired now. I've probably gone to bed. So let's get realistic. Let's just press play because I wouldn't be placing any more trades that evening. So press play. Once again, that if you pick up on the point here, I'm trying to replicate real life for the back testing. So for me, I'm just focusing on times of the day where I'm actually going to be able to trade. So I'm just going to let this play out until the end of the Asian session. And there we go. It's going down to where I thought it might go. Hopefully, before we get back on the trades again, it'll come back up a little bit. There we go. This is so I'll pause it again. We've got the end of the Asian session closing. Now, if I came into this, looked at this, let's have a look to see if there was any particular setups. Because I'm reasonably short bias now, because I feel like in the middle of the week, we're looking for a possible midweek reversal. We've got the psychological levels. What I'd hope to see now on, on my projections is I'd like to see this happen. This, this, and hopefully that. That's what I'm hoping for. Uh, so let's see if that, if we see the price action behave in the way we'd like it to behave, or it might just take a big dump. And you notice that I'm just going one candle at a time because when I'm in actually looking for a particular trade setup, I want the time to actually analyze each candle and work out if it matches my particular strategy. So what I'm looking for right now is that that's what I'm looking for. So I'm looking for that short. That will be where I'll take my trade. I'll place my stop just above that candle and my wrist and I'll stretch out the target until we get a one to three. Now this is obviously going to be a pretty ordinary video if I don't get any winning trades. However, once again, the process here is not necessarily about the strategy that I'm using. The focus is really about just understanding the process to understand how to measure and keep track of your backtesting results. I'm just going to pause this for a second. We're going to just bring over, because one thing I forgot to do is I forgot to number that trade. Put number three there. And all I did there, once again, is I've clicked on that. I know the shortcut for a cut and copy, so or a copy and paste. So I click on it, press Command C or Option C if you're on a Mac, or sorry, Command C or Control C, I think it is, and then Command or Control V again to paste the number, and I just double click on it to add the number. So this is not looking too good, but that's okay. <laughs> we'll see what happens um, on this particular trade. Let's keep on playing and see what, what happens here. Be nice to get a winning trade. I probably should have spent some time picking an area of time that supported what I was trying to do, but I'd like to be as authentic as possible. We're sitting here, sitting on the, the 800 EMA. Where is price going to do? Now, obviously, this trade now has gone well past my, so I would have gone to bed by now. And in the way I'm, I'm developing my trading style is, if I've set a trade, I just like to set and forget. So I've set that with a stop loss, so to take profit, and I'll just go to sleep with that one on trade if it hadn't closed out by the time I go to sleep. It's not necessarily the style of trading other people like to do, but it's just a particular strategy that I'm back testing now to see if it works out. So let's keep on pressing play on this. Probably gonna stop me out, but who knows. Now this will often happen when you do this, if you let a trade run, the actual short or long position tool you've drawn on there will actually get out of range. So all you need to do, is just pause it again and come along to the tool. And if you put your cursor over the tool, you can just drag it out. So I just press play. Let's see where this is going. It's headed in the right direction. Hopefully it's going to head down where we want it to go. Once again, I, it's really important to be super disciplined here. Otherwise, this process is not authentic. So obviously, the temptation there is, oh, I would have taken that. I would have got myself out there. Um, for me, that's not true. Um, I, I, I want to test a system where I can just do a set and forget. Um, however, if you've got a particular strategy, you might have a rule where you know, if I'm at two, two X up and or I've got a risk reward ratio between say one and two and one to three. Um, if your particular thing is on this instance here, I probably I would have been watching the charts there. So you could argue with yourself, hey, if I got down here and I started seeing it come back up, I might have taken it out there. 
a personal decision um, but for me come up with your own set of rules your own strategy and make sure you stick to it in your back testing don't change your rules past way through your um, back testing because otherwise it just makes the whole process not authentic and, and you might as well not waste your time doing back testing so keep on pressing play fortunately the market maker may well have got all the profit they were looking for but let's see what happens here I can't even remember where price got to in Bitcoin back in July so let's see where we're going apologize for this one and I'll probably fast forward this if you're watching this back and it keeps on going keeps on going goodness me it's a long trade so at this point here if you're looking at this if I'm if I'm actually doing this for real life I've been in this trade now since Wednesday it's it's Friday um, it's unlikely I probably would have kept holding that trade that long so probably when I wake came and had a look at this trade on the Friday or the th Friday evening um, I possibly would have closed that trade out um, on one of these retracements back up um, however for the sake of this let's just pretend for a second this came down and actually hit our target profit period now, I'm not doing anything particularly special here I'm just going to drag the tool to close off wherever it is that I felt like the the, the target profit was hit um, and then let's just use an example here say for instance this has come down and hit my take profit in the instance of this risk to reward calculator or the this little tool every time I get a winning trade I need to move three marbles to the right side if I lose a trade I move one marble to the left so I start on the left most side if it's a loser or I start on the right most sorry left most side if it's a winner so if I've got a winning trade and we're trading one to three risk to reward ratio I'm going to actually move three marbles to the right but I'm going to start on the leftmost um, jar. So we've got one candle here, sorry, one marble. So one, two, and we get to move one one marble over here to the right side. So three. There we go. So we've actually, that's our current position if this was a winner. I hope that makes sense. And obviously I could go forward and continue to, to see what happens. I might just actually speed that up a little bit and get up to the Asian close. Let's see if we can just do one more example. So I just press pause and once again just note with your back testing tool if you've got the um if you've got it at fast speed it, there is a bit of a delay between between when you press pause and press play. So you just have to be really careful with that. Um so there you go. I hope that makes sense. And obviously it's just a rinse and repeat. So it's just going through the process, use the long and short tool, place a trade where you feel like you've got to set up. Um, and you know, back here, for instance, once again, if you felt like when you looked at this particular price action here, if you felt like there's a particular long on here, it's just a matter of going here, use your long position tool, place it and be honest with yourself, place it where in, in the price action in front of where you are, place your stop loss where it is. Don't drag and drop the stuff um, after the fact because it's really easy to go oh I've seen the price now I would have done this don't do don't do your back testing based on what would you would have done do it based on what you, you your, your strategy tells you you would do and then you press play see what happens with the price action and then you'll know whether or not um, your strategy actually is effective or not so that particular there you go let's look at that we've got a winner so on that one there just drag that one there and let's be let's be honest with ourselves here that trade I just did on number three was actually a loser so let's go back here and fix up get this those two marbles back over here because we actually lost those two remember and that fourth trade was a winner so let's do that go back to my little calculator or my my marble tool drag three marbles to the right so there you go so out of four trades using my back testing strategy and just testing this particular strategy that I'm testing here I've had four trades, one trade was a winner, three trades were loser, losers, but using this particular tool, I've been able to calculate that at the moment, I'm actually $25 up on my whole account using the risk to reward ratio one to three. Um, so the focus of this wasn't, isn't about understanding the particular trading strategy. The goal of this video was to share with people um, that are interested, how do I use the replay tool within TradingView to backtest and then is there a simpler way of recording the success or failure of my trades? I've personally, I've done this now um, on this pair, so USD, USD, JPY. Um, so I've gone through, I went back, 
in time and I've tested the strategy that I'm particularly testing at the moment. I ended up going through the process and as you can see, I've got all the trades marked out. Only tracking trades between the Asian and the US Open, so Asia closed, US Open. So all of my trades are either in that little window, I didn't take any trades, I didn't open any trades in the Asian session because that's when I work. Um, one of the things I have done, as I said, these are all set and forget trades. So that was open a trade, let it sit and just see where it goes. So out of that whole testing process, see that trade there, I was in that trade for two days, um, took me 69 trades to double my account. So that was effectively moving all these marbles. And when I started, I think I had four or five marbles over the, over the left side. And then each time you win a trade, obviously you get to move three marbles back over to the middle or three marbles to the right side by one jar. Um, so by the time I'd actually moved all these marbles into this winning trades jar, it took me 69 trades to do that. So though what that tells me um, is that this strategy is profitable. Um, it did take me from effectively April through to September on that particular strategy to, to double my account. So what do I do with that now is I'll go back and analyze um, the particular trades that I took and what can I learn from each of those trades? Is there anything I could have done better next time? Um, and then when I've when I've learned a few things from that, I'll go back and back test it against another pair and see if I can refine my skills. Uh, that being said, however, with this month um, will do for me in regards to probably being willing to trade with real money. And you know, I'm getting pretty close to putting some real money in the Forex markets to have a go with applying the strategy that I'm currently working on. However, that was the, the intention of this once again was just to show people how to use the replay tool within TradingView, a really simple tool to measure success or failure of your particular strategy. And I just have found this much simpler than keeping a spreadsheet and trying to calculate percentage returns, etc., like that. So hopefully that was really helpful. Um, I'm happy to share other videos in the future and until next time, bye for now.